guys, welcome back. Welcome to another episode of Bay Area FPV Live. Today we are going to be rebuilding the Hildebeest, the 570 millimeter FPV drone. This is the first original Beast class drone uh, that came along uh, well before the Tasmanian and some of these others that you've seen that are more homegrown. This was the first one uh, by, it was developed and designed by Stand In Quad Designs by Stefan uh, alongside Charles Hidalgo. A lot of you guys have heard that name before. He sells a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of his builds actually on RC groups. So anyways, enough about who did that. The Hildebeest is an amazing, amazing frame. I want to talk about just a couple of the details about this frame uh, that I feel kind of make it unique. Uh, to start with, it has 12 millimeter thick arms. Now these consist of two six millimeter plates sandwiched together with press nuts and uh, bolts going through in several different locations, but it gives it this ultimate rigidity uh, that really kind of makes it a tank. And, and I, I mean that with all seriousness. I have had uh, this thing cartwheel across a lawn at 80 plus miles an hour and the only thing that was wrong when it finished was a broken prop or props i should say uh which when you're paying 15 dollars a prop still kind of sucks but still it's uh it, the frame is a a tank so today uh as i had mentioned yesterday in the live stream and for those of you who didn't see yesterday's live stream where we drew the winner of the jumper t16 radio which happened to be Nerdcopter. Again, one more shout out to that. Thank you and congratulations. I mentioned that we were going to be rebuilding the Hildebeest, that I had completely stripped it down, uh, taken all of the parts off of it, and the only thing that is left currently is the frame, uh, fully assembled still, and I made some little uh, vibration dampening pads out of some neoprene uh, and then put some shrink wrap over the arm itself. So that's it. That's all that's left. And I got all brand new X-Class electronics that we're going to put onto the Hildebeest. So uh, before I, I go through what we're going to do next, which is just going to be a quick inventory, I want to go ahead and just do a quick shout out to 123 Race Drone. Hey, how's it going? How are you doing? And uh, yeah, so what I figured I would do first is just take you guys through a quick inventory of everything that is going to go onto the drone, and then we're going to unbox that stuff, and then we're going to get straight into the build or, or rebuild, if you will. I'm going to go with this episode uh, for as long as I, I can. I'm hoping that we might be able to complete it. That's that's a that's a high goal right now. But um, at the very least, we're going to get everything unboxed. We're going to get the electronics tinned up, some of them installed, and I may need to split this rebuild into a couple live streams, but we'll see. So we'll stop talking now and get straight to the uh, to the inventory. All right, so uh, for that, I'm gonna take you guys over to the desk. All right, so starting off, uh, got just here the SanDisk uh, micro SD card, just a 32 gig. This is going to be for my black box logs. I think I picked up a, uh, a three or four pack of these off of Amazon for, I don't even know, $10 for four of them or three of them. It was so cheap. So I, I highly recommend this. If you guys aren't doing black box recording, some of the new flight controllers actually have some memory built into the flight controller to enable the black box recordings without the SD card. Those are great. Uh, however, the Brain Radix flight controller does not, so it requires this. So we've got a micro SD card. Get that off to the side here. We have the four X Nova X class motors. These are the, I thought it said on here, yeah, these are the 350 KV uh, motors. So let's go ahead and get those open really quick here. If you guys have never built or seen uh, an X-Class quad live or just some of the components that it, that it uses, I really just want to, I want to show you how, how big they really are. So 
this is uh this is the motor right there i mean that's 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 pretty serious it's a it's a big motor anyways so here's all the uh here's all the wires that it comes with so we're just going to get that one set to the side and unbox the rest of them Okay, so we have a question here about the price of the motors. Um, they were ten dollars. <laughs> That's what I tell some people. Uh, so no, these motors are about a hundred and twenty-five dollars each. Uh, it's an it's not cheap. Uh, on average, you will spend somewhere in the neighborhood of i would say 1500 to 2000 dollars to build an x class or beast class quad with the top of the line components um they're just i mean and, and these aren't the only motors out there there are others uh that are less expensive but i would i would go as far as to say this is definitely a situation of you get what you pay for and when you're when you're flying something around with 13 inch props that are spinning over 20,000 rpms and the things moving at close to 100 miles an hour or faster in some cases I don't know if you really want to be flying the, the, the $20 sunny sky or, or whatever hey that's just my opinion Okay, let's move on. Uh, for the receiver, we have the TBS Crossfire Diversity Nano RX. Just gonna get this thing open real quick here. Some antennas and some wires, that's it. All right. For the VTX, uh, we are using the TBS Unify Pro 5.8. This is the HVSE with the MMCX adapter. This one claims to go to one watt of output power. However, uh, I'm sure some of you guys have seen uh, Bardwell's video where he does a test, and I believe he proves that it doesn't really go to uh, one watt. I don't really care because I don't run it that high anyhow, but it just happened to be what I have. Uh, for the antenna, we have the Luminear Axie, and this is also an MMCX uh, connector, as you can see right there. Let's put this down so you can see it right there. Get this little focused a little better. Okay. And get this to the side. All right, uh, to the flight controller. Like I said, we have the Brain FPV Radix flight controller, Radix, Radix, call it what you want. It's an awesome flight controller. And inside here we have some stickers. We have five little rubber vibration dampening standoff. Mm sleeves and then we have the flight controller itself in a little bag if you guys haven't had a chance to use the uh, radix flight controller i would definitely consider giving it a shot on one of your next builds i i happen to really really love this flight controller um it's packed full of features they have a proprietary OSD on it, which allows you to upload your own logo. It's pretty sick. So back over to the chat really quick. Jean-Pierre, how's it going? Uh, why Rebirth? Was the first one doomed? You might say that. Um, it was a solid build with premium components, 
we were using most of the same components that this build is going to be using. However, the uh, APD120 ESCs that I was using on the original build were the very, very first batch to ever get shipped out to, um, to customers. And so I'm not sure if that played a part in it or not, but the, the previous build of the Hildebeest just seemed to be plagued with issues. Uh, and you can see that in the videos that I've got up on the channel. Uh, it was an amazing flying machine when it flew. Uh, I believe part of the problem may have been the fact that I was trying to push it a little too hard. The uh, motors that we were using were the T-Motor F1000 545kV motors, uh, and I was pushing that with 8S, and it was it's a heavy, heavy quad. I believe we were pushing very close to 10 pounds, perhaps even more. I, again, I say that in one of the uh, one of the videos I, I did the whole weight and whatnot, but nonetheless, it just it was it had issues, and I wasn't happy with the performance for it, so I ripped it apart. Um, and I got all new components, which is what we're doing now. We're going through an inventory of everything. So I'm hoping this one uh, will perform as well as the cannonball that I have, considering I'm using all of the exact same X-Class components on this build. So, all right, let's get right on back. Uh, actually, real quick, sorry about that. Um, XZ accelerating, accelerating. Uh -huh. It took me a second, a little slow. How's it going? <laughs> All right, let's get right back over to the uh, to the inventory container where we were. Okay, and for here we have the ESCs and we have four of these, obviously, and the PDB. So we'll just go ahead and get the PDB out of its wrapper first. Now, guys, these are the best, uh, and I, I would actually love someone to tell me I'm wrong because that means that there's something else that I need to get that's better than this. Uh, but I don't believe I'm wrong. So these are the best uh, ESCs and PDBs that you can get right now for the large scale beast class and X class quads. Uh, this is the APD PDB 500. Uh, and as you can see, it is, it's just, it's amazing. Look how thick that thing is. See if I can get that lined up with the, uh, it's pretty sick. It's pretty amazing. Um, let's get that to the side. Get these ESCs opened up. Now, each one of these ESCs ships with a capacitor from APD. And there's nothing wrong with the capacitor that they include. As a matter of fact, it's right here. It's a 330 microfarad, 50 volt cap. However, I am going to be replacing those right away and using some Panasonic FM, uh, what are these, 470 microfarad, 50 volt caps. So I'm just going to be setting these ones that came with it aside for use later. And here we have one of the uh, APD 120F3 ESCs. So let's go ahead and set that aside. I'm just going to make it quick and rip through the rest of these. One, two, three race drone asks, am I going to build today? Uh, that is the plan. Uh, I want to at least start the build today. I'm hoping perhaps to finish it. Uh, I could have unboxed all of this earlier and I thought about doing that however I figured that not everyone has seen the the beast class and x class components or had an opportunity to really kind of hear about them so I, I figured I would just I'd take this step by step go through all of the components talking about it get to the build um, but it shouldn't be too much longer we don't have too much more to talk about plus I'm trying to rip these open quick as you can see
Okay, here are the ESCs and the PDB. I'm just gonna set these over here to the side for now. Get them out of the way. Caps. We've got some wire. I have some extra vibration dampeners in case I need them. For the connectors for the battery that is going to go onto the APD PDB 500. We have some A main AS150 anti spark connectors, and those are what we're going to be using uh, to put on. These will go to the PDB with some 10 gauge wire. Now, now, <laughs> again, for, for those of you who haven't, uh, ever built anything other than a five inch uh that's that's totally cool but but to, to think about 10 gauge for a second let's talk about this because most of the wires that you use on your five inch are going to be somewhere between 18 and perhaps even 20 22 gauge wires uh i mean this is this is serious this is probably you know a quarter of an inch if you consider the insulation so let's get those out of the way what else? What else? What else? We are repurposing the Fox ear camera uh, from the previous build. There's no reason to buy a camera. There wasn't anything wrong with that. Uh, we've already gone through the VTX, the receiver. Uh, I do have a little top plate. This actually came off of an Impulse RC Alien build that I did a long time ago, and I just saved this. I may incorporate this into the build just as a uh, go over on top of the stack and be able to put something, the receiver or perhaps the... Uh, VTX on top of it, we'll see. It's a uh, possible use. But yeah, that's uh, that's about it. I guess we can go ahead and open up the VTX and stuff really quick just to get that out. We will be using Smart Audio on UART 6. All right, so that's done. Let's get these motors out of the way. And I'm going to get the frame up on the table. We will be right back and we're going to get this build underway in just a couple seconds. So hang tight, guys. Be right back. Okay, I've got the Hildebeest up on the table. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and put on the, uh, the PDB. We're gonna get that tinned up and then we'll assemble the flight control and everything. And there's all kinds of different people who, who assemble things differently. Some go from the center out, some go from the outside in. I don't care, do, do what you want. For me, I like doing it this way. So we are gonna, like I said, we'll start with the PDB, move to the flight controller, some of the other electronics, and then I, I think we'll just kind of work our way out from there. All right, so uh, here we go. Uh, as you may have uh, have guessed, I'm, I'm working with limited space here, so I'm trying to, uh, <laughs> trying to make the best of, of what I've got being able to to present this to you guys in somewhat of a a watchable fashion so i'm just removing the top plate right now i know that my hand is in the way of the camera sorry about that but really there's nothing to see just a couple more screws and we'll have this out of the way One two three race drone says I only have a five inch. The camera wire is about what mine uses. Yeah, that's that's uh that's about right. Well, perhaps a little more. I mean, you would use this uh, this gauge of wire for wiring up your electronics. Perhaps the camera to the flight controller, VTX, the receiver, things like that. But if you're running a five inch uh, for the motors and ESCs, I'm I'm thinking you probably have about 18, 18 gauge or so. Uh, 
give or take a couple. So somewhere between 16 and 20, but 16 would be pushing it a little bit unless you're running 6S or something that's pulling just a ton of amps. All right, there's that. I'm just gonna get this. So what I've got here is I've just got some nylon screws that are coming up from the bottom. And then I have some nylon nuts on those holding them up and also giving it a little bit of space, a little bit of distance between the carbon and the bottom of the PDB. Obviously, uh, you don't want those to come in contact. Uh, as you can see here on the PDB, we do have the arrows pointing towards the front. And on this build, here's the, the camera holder. So we're just going to literally just set that on there like so. And for the, the next standoffs here, I'm just going to use some of these. I believe these ones might work. It might be too short. Yep. All right, let me see if I can pull this uh, pull this camera in just a, a little bit for you guys so we can get a little bit closer to the action. That should help just a little bit. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this tinned up a little bit. For the solder, I am using a uh, 6040 rosin core high solder. It's a little bit out of focus right there because I've got this focused way down on the flight controller. But as you can see there, 6040, it's a 0.3 diameter one pound spool of this stuff So to tin these pads, uh, there's there's holes in the center. So you really want to just kind of you know take it slow, work your way around, let the the solder build up onto the pad, and then just kind of work it around, and then it will uh, it'll populate the whole pad as it goes around. Okay. 
Now you'll see here on the PDB, we have a, I suppose I should have had a pointer. Uh, we have a positive and a negative on both sides of the PDB. Um, a lot of people will run uh, redundant inputs into this. I myself, I'm just going to choose one. I'll, I'll run a positive off one side and a, a negative off the other side and kind of have the leads wrap around down and under. Uh, this is going to be uh, using a 12S pack. So the same packs that I run on the Cannonball um, will be used for, for this build. Um, so this is, this is going to be... A, It'll definitely live up to its name when it's done. It's it's definitely going to be a, a beast, so to speak. So just to match up how my batteries are, uh, we're going to put negative on this side. I'm just going to turn this pad up. I'm going to keep my hands out of the way so you guys can see this. It makes holding the uh, soldering iron a little interesting. All right, there's that one. Hey, Michael. Uh, he says, so what's your view on other frames out there like the Catalyst Machine Works ones and the Patriot? Uh, the Catalyst Machine Works makes some excellent, excellent frames. Uh, I have the Cannonball 800 X-Class frame. I love it. Check out the videos on my channel if you haven't already. The thing is epic. Uh, I actually purchased the Tasmanian frame on the pre-order from Neil and received it and it sat around uh for quite some time and i just i never built it i never i never quite got around to it so so i actually let that frame go i i passed it on to uh another fellow fpv'er who was super interested in it and uh and yeah so i i think catalyst makes some some solid solid frames and if you you won't go wrong if, if you buy a catalyst frame you're going to be getting quality not only that but but neil stands behind it so um if something were to arrive in less than perfect condition or whatever you don't have to worry about uh trying to deal with a a company that has a poor customer service or that might be overseas uh he's he's based right out of texas so you send him an email say hey something showed up a little less than what i thought it might be and uh and he'll square it away for you no problems um, the Patriot, I, I have to be honest, I, I'm not 100% familiar with that frame. Uh, drop a link here in the um, in, in the chat if, if you've got it, and I'll, I'll gladly take a look at it and let you know what I think. Now, again, uh, my comments on that will be purely, you know, objective. I, I, I have no experience with that particular frame. But again, um, the Hilda Beast is a, uh, it's quite the frame, and it's very limited. Uh, there's only 12 of them currently in existence. Uh, and this one that I have happens to be, uh, I believe it's, I actually believe it's number one. It's the first, no, Charles Hidalgo has the first one. So this is a, uh, this is two, I believe. Um, and, and it's just a, it's just a fantastic, fantastic frame. So yeah, hope that answered your question. <laughs>
Got to get a little more solder. When it starts getting down to about an inch in length, I'm like, yeah, not looking to burn my hand. One of the things that's worth mentioning in regards to the APD uh, ESCs are the capacitors are not optional. The ESCs simply will not work and will fail every single time without the capacitors. And uh, which is one of the reasons why I'm opting to replace the ones that come with them right out the gate to the uh, 470s versus the 300s. Again, that's just a preference of mine, but I really like these uh, Panasonic capacitors. I've had very good luck with them. The solder points on the ESCs, where you connect the capacitors, uh, are very, very, very small and definitely difficult to... To, to get a solid, good uh, solder. I believe even uh, I believe even Bardwell mentioned that when he was building his Tasmanian using the APD, uh, that that it was you know interesting how small the solder points were. One thing that I do uh, with the capacitors, once I get them soldered on to the ESC, is add just a tiny bit of goop to the uh, kind of sandwiched right between. Let me see if I can get this for you guys. So here's the ESC. Let's see if I can... Here's the ESC right here, and these two little points, those two little pads that you see there, this is where the capacitor just sits on here. It just goes like this, and you solder it right in on those two joints. Now, let's say you got that in there. It still can wiggle around like this. So what I do is I take a little bit of goop and just kind of stick it right down in here, smash it down. And once that dries, that prevents the movement from occurring right here, which could essentially break one of your solder joints loose. And the moment that that solder joint comes loose, even just that far, like you see there, it's done. Your bird's falling out of the sky.
I would say that these motors uh, are significant. Um, it's going to be significantly heavier than it was last time. I, I definitely think that if we didn't break 10 pounds last time, uh, we will for sure uh, this time. Absolutely. A little warm. Let's see if I can point this out to you guys, what we've got going on here. So on the PDB, we have the following connections. We have 12 volt ground, 5 volt, 12 volt ground, 5 volt, 12 volt ground, M1, 2, 3, 4, and telemetry. So these ESCs are going to be using ProShot 1000. Uh, that's the protocol that I will be using anyways. Um, and so we will be running the negative uh, signal and the telemetry uh, out of each ESC back to the PDB. Then we'll be running the telemetry here up to the brain flight controller. Here on the back, we have 12 volt ground, five volt, 12 volt ground, five volt. So as you can see, here's ton of options, plenty plenty to power anything and everything you could possibly want from your LEDs to your VTX to your receiver to, to everything. And, uh, and these are built exceptionally well. So on the flight controller itself, we've got to get some of that tinned up. So I'm going to move the frame out of the way for just a second. Put a couple of these on here. Hold the PDB in place while we move this guy. Okay. Light controller. So now we have a couple of options here. One option uh, that is a perfectly viable and good option is to use one of the cables to go from the brain flight controller down to the uh, PDB. There is nothing at all wrong with that. As a matter of fact, uh, it's, it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad option. So if we wanted to do that, essentially, we would just put this in here like so. Find out which exact one, which was which and then just bring them down to solder them onto the PDB. I think that that should work fine. So let's see here. If we were to mount this the same direction, like so, putting this on top here, Yes, we would 
definitely have enough room to get that down to where it needed to go. Sorry, guys. So if we were to take the PDB right here, use this little cable, and bring it down and around under here, we would have definitely enough room to get it over to where it needs to go and still be able to get this mounted. So I think that that's a decent option. It does put a little bit of, of strain right here on this. Um, typically, I, I would probably just go for, for soldering the, the individual ones. Let's see, though, if I can do this. This is going to... Yeah, I think we're just going to solder it individually. So let's get this thing all tinned up right now. That's nice. Let me get this a little more in focus for you guys. There we go. Much better. There we go. Okay, uh, so let's talk about this. What are we gonna use? Uh, we're not gonna use the buzzer. So we're gonna use the, we'll use the RX3 and TX. That's gonna be for our receiver. RX, well, let me see, think about this for a second. RX4, I believe is what we're going to be using for telemetry. Come up. Camera control. Video in, video out. TX1 and RX1, nope, five volt. Round. Ah, oh, yes. Last one that we need that I didn't tin up is TX six. All right, so there we've got the flight controller all tinned up, ready to go. So now I'll uh, get some wires out and we'll start getting this thing uh, soldered up over to the PDB, get those installed. These parts take the longest. So once we get the flight controller, uh, PDB, receiver, camera, and VTX installed, the rest is quick. So I, I would say that we're probably about a third of the way there. So we'll be right back with you guys. Hang tight.
Okay, sorry about that guys. I had to step aside for just a second here. I had to uh, give my dog some medicine. Any of you pet owners out there know how that goes? So, DD Yoda man. Nice work. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. All right, let's get right back over to the build. just butchering some other components old adapters and crap that doesn't get used anymore these days that's one thing that will save you a little bit of money if you've got some old components or whatever that you just don't use take whatever you can off of them you'll use it later whether it's just a wire or whatever if you don't then guess what here you come Amazon Amazon loves you Amazon loves all of us all right that should do a little bit flip this thing over Take a look at what we've got here really quick. Okay, we're going to go from 5 volt ground. Current, okay. All right. There is a chance you may hear dog go nuclear in a moment we shall see it's gonna get these wires tinned up really quick here I think it's about to happen. If it does, I will mute you guys. All right. Let's see here. Get a bunch of these all staged up at once because it's doing one at a time. It's just not working out. somebody asked me before on an uh, older live stream 
why I was using this old busted helping hands rather than a good one. I have a new one. I have one of the one of the units that has like eight hands or whatever. But I like this one. It's small. It doesn't take up this huge giant space on my desk. Almost. All right, so here we've got some uh, random wires tinned up that are able to be used for the flight controller. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and start choosing these. I think we'll just go with the black ones uh, for the motor inputs. Kind of keep it cool looking. I am going to solder them. Sorry about that, guys. There we go. I'm going to solder them inwards. It'll look a little bit neater. So in this case, some needle nose would be handy. I can get right up on it. Okay, guys, uh, sorry about that. I'm back. I need to put this on right here. I will be back in just a quick second. I need to go grab some additional wires. One minute.
Okay, got what I needed. Hopefully we won't have to uh, be stopping anymore. This is definitely uh, going to be an interesting uh, live stream. It's, it's very long. Parts of it are very, very boring. I had even contemplated uh, kind of getting everything ready, uh, putting all but one of the motors on soldering together all but one of the ESCs, you know, and just and doing it that way and then uh, setting up that final one here on the stream. And I asked a few people uh, what they felt about that. And they actually all thought that it should be uh, it should be complete. So here's what you get. That is too long. We are not putting that on there. There's the motor connectors. Let me take a look at those really quick here. Solid. Okay. Next one over here is five volt. Let's get this back up here so you can see it. There we go. Okay, so this is going to get us just this, right? We have red one signifying power to the flight controller. The yellow one is uh, what I'm using for ground. I don't particularly care about colors. And if you've seen the previous Hill to Beast build video, you saw that because every single wire on that build was orange. Uh, it went quite nicely with all of the uh, TPU printed parts. So like I said before, I'm just using some extra wires that I had laying around. So right here I see a pad that could use just a tad more solder for its tin. There we go. Nice. So while we're while we're over here, I'm gonna grab the camera. Where did that go? Right back here. We're just gonna take this cable. It's coming off the camera. See which way the orientation of the board goes? That way. So the camera connects to video out, it connects to this side. Great. All right. So now we have this cut off. Now these are color coded exactly as you would expect. We have 
positive for red, negative for black. We have video for yellow, and we're going to be using the white for camera control. See if I can set this down. Let's get them tinned up right there. Set this back up here, if you guys can see it. Okay. So as I previously mentioned, going to do the same thing for these. We're going to solder them inwards. Okay, there's the camera, there's the power and the motors. Oh, let's take a look at this really quick here. So for the VTX, it's, it's going to be a little interesting, right? So I'm going to have two of the wires coming from the flight controller so we're going to have the video out right here we're going to have the tx6 where is the tx6 on this right here so we are going to have the tx6 for smart audio and we're going to have the video out so we'll have white and yellow but yet we're going to be about it pulling uh too much power from the VTX. We don't have to worry about it pulling too much power from the flight controller. All right, so here we are. Our little pigtail from the uh,
Okay. So here we are with our little pigtail from the VTX. And obviously, if, if you're looking at this here, we have, uh, this is what's going to power the VTX. Now this is an HV, so it can actually, it doesn't have to be five volt. It can go to the 12 volt, doesn't matter. Uh, but it all, it can also go to the, uh, to the five volt. Uh, here on this one, we have power. Oh, sorry, if I'm counting this out here. So the white one is going to be the smart audio. And then we do have a power out. Now this is going to be for the camera and then we have video and then we have ground. So we don't actually need those ones. All we need is the power that's going to power the video from this. We're going to use Just that. So if you can see this little pigtail now, we just have the four that we need. Smart audio, video, positive and negative. Go ahead and tin these up. The goal with this uh, build is to iteration of the Hilda Beast. I believe we just broke 95 with it, 95, 96 miles an hour with it. So that was on ADA. New for this build. X Nova 350KVs. I don't think we should have a problem at all. Considering we've already broken 100 miles an hour with the cannonball, uh, and that was easy, and that was that was just the beginning of the cannonball's days. Uh, we've actually gone quicker than that now. So, for any of you that are local and that would like to see the cannonball, and perhaps. This Hildebeest, if I can get it done in time, I will be out at Baylands Park in Sunnyvale um, this weekend. So feel free to uh, to stop by, say what's up, take a look at the cannonball, see it in action. Again, if I can get this done in time, you'll see this as well. If I can get this done in time, we will be doing a maiden of the reborn Hildebeest. We have the pads left for the receiver. And what else do we have over here? We're not going to use those. So I think that that is just about it. Okay, so as I mentioned at the beginning of this stream, uh, I wasn't quite sure how long this build or rebuild, rebirth, whatever of the Hildebeest was going to take. And I assumed that it would take a little while, uh, that it might be quick, that it might not be capable of some truly awesome feats of not only freestyle, just rip to cut the stream for today. What we've done so far, I'll just kind of quickly recap. We tend up, sorry. We unpackaged, took a full inventory of what it is that we're going to be putting onto the Hildebeest. We unpacked everything. We tinned up the PDB. 
we soldered up or tinned up and then soldered all of the flight controller with the exception of the receiver and we got everything together and ready to go for the next stage the next stream so what i will probably do for in preparation uh for the next stream and to save a little bit of the time is i'll mount the motors to the frame uh, one thing I can tell you guys that I'm going to be doing, uh, in case you don't know or don't do it on yours, I recommend it no matter what size quad you are building. Uh, Craft King, I am going Sunday. I, I hope you can make it down. Uh, I was originally contemplating whether or not that it was going to be tomorrow or Sunday, but it is going to be Sunday. I will get there. I'm probably going to get there at about 6 a.m., which is what time I normally get there. And I split about uh, noon, let's just say. I may, depending on, I'm going to check the uh, the reservation calendar, make sure that nobody's rented out the whole place for a race like they typically do this time of year. If they haven't, and if nobody's rented out Pickleweed uh, Picnic Area, which is where we'll be, for anybody who didn't know, um, I may try and talk to a few of the guys that go there and see if they want to pitch in and, and you know, hit me up and run to Costco and, and we'll buy a bunch of burgers and dogs and charcoal and stuff and make a day out of it, have a barbecue and fly and stuff. So possibly, and, and if, if any of you come by and, and we've got that stuff, you're welcome to have some. Uh, there's nothing, no catch to that. Uh, but if not, then we'll be there flying uh, anyway. But it is going to be Sunday. And so, yeah. Now back to what I was saying really quick, sorry, uh, about the motors is I will mount the motors to the frame and do any other type of uh, things that I think would just be. Um, I highly recommend, guys, use Threadlocker. Now, I'll be using the blue. Um, I have actually used the red for the cannonball because of just the size, you know, any potential vibrations, things like that. I, I don't want those motors coming off. Uh, we actually blew a prop at a full throttle punch out on the cannonball and uh, it, it sucked because it broke two of the arms and it severed the wires from one of the motors, busted all the props. So, I mean, I think when it was all said and done, we were looking at about 200, $225 worth of damage but it was a bad ass crash. It sounded like there's a video of it. Check it out. I'll put it up in the, in the description, uh, down in the description. It sounded just like the a 10 when it fires its nose cannon, when this prop exploded and was just completely off balance. It was like, I'm like, Oh shit, it's going down. <laughs> and, and the worst part about it was, I had enough time to actually to think about it and be like, oh, it's, it's, it's going down. There's nothing I can do. Like, uh, just enjoy this one. And then it starts spiraling out of control. Boom, straight into the ground. But check it out. Uh, anyways, guys, now I'm rambling. So thank you for tuning in to episode one or part one, I should say, part one of the Hildebeast Rebirth. I would say that we're probably about a third of the way done. So uh, moving at that rate, we're looking at, at two more streams, maybe one more, depending on what all I get done uh, off camera. And uh, Craft King, I hope to see you there. If you can make it, cool. If you can't, there's always next time. Um, Dan, I will see you there. I'm pretty sure you'll be there unless you've got uh, previous engagements. And there's some other folks from the Bay Area that I hope to see there as well anybody's welcome but uh guys so that about does it for this time again this is part one of the hildebeast rebirth thank you for tuning in if you liked this video i know it was long hopefully you got something out of it if not then you know don't watch next time that's fine uh but if you did enjoy it and you are interested in seeing what it is that this ends up looking like when it's all said and done then tune in next time i'm hoping to have a follow-up stream within the next day or two, because I really do want to have this thing done by Sunday. Uh, so I hope to see you there. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and I will see you next time.